Welcome back. Our first guest is Chara Torres Spellacy, a professor of law at Stetson University College of Law. Professor, welcome to Florida this week. Nice to see you again. Uh, thanks for having me. I want to start with a news story about book bans in school libraries. A new report out this week found that Florida saw the highest number of school library book ban cases in the country in the last half of 2023. 3,135 cases. The Writers Freedom Group, Pan America, says half the cases came in one district, Escambia County, in the Florida Panhandle. And I, I want to ask you this. The, the uh, governor, DeSantis, has claimed that not a single book has been banned in Florida, a statement that PolitiFact says was false. But this is what the governor said. The governor says no book is banned in Florida. He says the most grotesque pornographic books that are in schools that have been removed have been removed because they're inappropriate. And legally speaking, is he right? Is there no book ban in Florida? No, I think we're embarrassingly uh, number one in book bans in the nation. Uh, and if students at public schools can't access books, those books are essentially banned for that student. But, but could the governor say, look, it's, it's uh, people in the community, in the school districts that have uh, an opinion about a book and they just wanna see that book removed from school libraries. So the state's not involved, it's individuals, individual citizens. Yeah, well, we are turning individuals uh, against each other and uh, what's been happening is individuals are challenging books and then the book is taken off the shelves. So uh, whether you think of this as the state sort of outsourcing censorship, the result is the same, that children in these public schools can't access these books. Now, this week the governor signed a bill limiting how many challenges a non-parent may make to books in school libraries. Is that an admission that the original law went too far? Well, I think the original law did go too far, but this is not much of an improvement. Um, as I understand it, uh, people who do not have a kid in uh, school can still challenge books in Florida. And then parents who have uh, a kid in school can, char can challenge a infinite number of books in Florida. So I don't think we're, uh, we've fixed this problem yet. All right, well, on another topic, the governor signed legislation that prohibits cities and counties in Florida from creating heat protection safety rules for outdoor workers. This legislation effectively kills a proposal in Miami-Dade County to require a 10-minute break in the shade every two hours for any outdoor construction workers or farm workers. Here in Florida, there are two million workers that work outside across the state. Uh, Professor, this is one example of a larger effort by Tallahassee to say to local governments, you are no longer in control, Tallahassee is in control. What do you think of that trend? Yeah, we've seen this all over the country. There is an enormous amount of tension between red state legislatures and blue cities. So blue cities will pass some sort of reform and then uh, the Republican legislature will override that, that reform. And we've seen that uh, in Florida, and now it has come to heat ordinances. Is there any way local governments can fight back to say, no, Tallahassee, you can't control. We're the people that know the problem locally. We're trying to fix it, and you should stay out of this. I mean, unfortunately, under the Florida Constitution, the Florida legislature is essentially the final word here. Uh, but it's a sort of troubling trend because um, the people at the lo local level probably know better than those in the state capitol. So the number of heat-related deaths in Florida has risen 88% uh, from 2019 to 2022. Uh, I'm wondering, it's, it's become very dangerous out there. There have been about 120,000 workplace injuries around the country. Uh, due to heat related injuries. Can, can workers who are working outside, let's say a farm worker or a roofer uh, who is forced to stay out too long, suffers an injury because of heat exposure, can they sue their employer? So uh, I, I'm gonna defer on uh, suits by employees uh, to employers um, as I'm not a uh, lawyer in that area. But what I can say is 
there may be a conflict between federal law, which also protects workers under OSHA, and state law. So if there's a conflict between federal law and state law, then it's going to be the federal protections that control. And I think that's what this legislation does, uh, too, is that it, it says effectively OSHA is control, in control of the federal agency. So one last question. In 2020, um, the legislature passed protection for high school athletes from heat exposure. And you've got a difference now. Workers don't have access to that protection. Are we treating two classes of people differently here in Florida? Uh, it, it sounds like we are treating uh, workers more poorly than uh, athletes. And that's troubling. Uh, we should have heat protections in a state like Florida for both groups. Well, Professor, thanks for coming on Florida this week. Nice to see you again. Good to see you.